Michael. We are doing Georgetown today. More lifestyle stuff today for Georgetown. We're going to talk yeah. about food and fun and families. All the F's of Georgetown, but not the <laughs> bad F. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Michael, you are the foodie. Yes. Do you remember the days where M Street used to be the place where all of the eats were? Yes, it was yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. And it was it was incredible. I know. Yeah. And there's still stuff there. Yeah. But it's not like it was. Yeah, no, it's I was laughing with somebody the other day. I think it might have been Hannah. Uh, we were talking about um, remembering the Johnny Rockets. Yes. And now it's a Levain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's funny because like there still are so many good restaurants there, but they're just tucked away yeah. on other streets. And they've been there. Some of them have been there for a long time and some of them have just popped yeah. up or whatever. But yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm starting with Philomena because that's my like all time favorite. I we have to have a lunch meeting with somebody and I'm like, can we please go to Philomena? <laughs> I've been there in like a year. Okay, so Philomena is like the best, best, best Italian food in my opinion, hands down. It's like everything you want in Southern Italian food. It's so delicious. It's yeah. like the old school Italian. Yeah. Um, reservations are usually booked several weeks out. It's yeah. like an old DC institution. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to say it even though I'm wearing my shirt in honor of the occasion. <laughs> Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. And I'm not joking. When you go to Philomena, you must get the cannoli. Yeah. This isn't a cannoli. It's like a waffle-sized thing with cannoli mix in the middle. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's unbelievable. really cool. And a cool tip, though, is that uh, if you do want to go to Philomena's and don't want to, uh, you know, uh, fight the reservation system and all of that, um, uh, going during the week at lunchtime is that, actually an easy time to get in. That's what we found. Yeah. We got, like, a reservation really quickly. Yeah, that's always been uh, the case with there. Because, like, sometimes I'll just think, you know, especially with the restaurants in Georgetown, because I'm on the other side of the city, it's more spontaneous. Yeah. And we're just like, oh, you know, so I've noticed that the lunchtime uh, at Philomena is always available when I've been checking, like, over yeah. the table. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, what else is there? Oh, my God. <laughs> Cafe Milano. Yeah. Cafe yeah. Milano. Yeah. Cafe Milano is, is awesome. Yeah. Um, that's like the presidential place. That seems to be where all the big presidents go and the pre big, big DC people and stuff. There's always like the big black cars outside. Yeah. Yeah. And then my absolute favorite chef, uh, Fabio Trabocci, mm -hmm. uh, his Fiola Mare um, down on the waterfront is absolutely amazing. We did Thanksgiving there. We uh, went there for my birthday. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Big yeah, <laughs> yeah. our uh, Thanksgiving dinner was amazing. They brought out, they said it was a 16 ounce ribeye and they brought it out and that was definitely 20 ounce or more. And I felt like the Flintstones, like they were going to put it on the table and the table was going to flip. It was <laughs> the most massive piece of ribeye and uh, it's really incredible. So I love Fiola Mari. Fabio, he, his restaurants are just incredible. The staff is amazing, um, especially like over at Fiola across the city. It's like watching a ballet dance with uh, the server. The yeah. Staff. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, they, so we went, when we were there, it was nighttime. It's, it's very like dark in there and it's on the water yeah. and everything. But you, like, if you look around, like you're going to see some faces that look familiar, you know, people that are, you know, DC famous kind of, or on TV or politics. Like there's, it definitely gets a crowd that is like the CNBC kind of crowd. Yeah. And my favorite one, my favorite drink on their menu, it's served in a giant fish glass <laughs> um, and it's called the sexy fish and they put dry ice in it. It's amazing. <laughs> so if you want something for like an Instagrammable drink, like that is definitely the place to go it's it's really really awesome i it's, love it it's spendy yeah it's yeah spendy but yeah. yeah il canal's another one yeah il canal yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, it's yeah. like you have to go down that i think it's like the little alley thing and it's like but you can get to it from m street but you go yeah. like down and then downstairs but yeah yeah so that's another one yeah 1789 yeah um my dad has been talking about that for years he would always take you know business clients um there and loved it and so um you know i just uh an old georgetown stable yeah it's yeah. yeah there's they've got the menu out front too and it's like it is it's like it still has a very 80s feel to it. Like yeah. the Olin people ate a lot of steak and meat and potatoes yeah. and stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, all right. So I always assumed that 1789 um, was named for the year that uh, George Washington became our first president. Wrong. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yes. It was named for the year that Georgetown University was founded. That's cool. I didn't know it? that. Now, those two things might be related, like yeah. Georgetown University becoming Georgetown because of George Washington. But no, 1789 was actually named because of Georgetown University being founded that year. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And then uh, uh, the tombs. Yeah. Um, it's sort of like taking it down a, a notch, like literally and figuratively. So 
the tombs is like the Georgetown University place, the mm-hmm. pub. Yeah. 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 It's definitely worth a visit, you know, to kind of be a part of the culture. I know. It's really, yeah. it's very, yeah. that's another very St. Elmo's Fire feeling kind of bar to me. Yes. Like agreed. it's got, like you could go in there and have lunch there and you could see like, okay. It yeah. is a little weird to eat lunch in a place that has absolutely no windows to the outside. Yes. They're completely underground. <laughs> yes. Hence the name, the tombs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and we can't forget about one of your favorites. Clyde. Clyde's. <laughs> Your artichoke dip is so delicious. (laughs) Crab artichoke dip. Yeah, we get it every time we're there. And the calamari with the buffalo sauce. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. It's so good. It's delicious. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I've eaten at the other locations, but Georgetown is my favorite. Georgetown, I will say that um, Tower Oaks Lodge up in Rockville is also another excellent one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um... Yeah, very, uh, definitely one of my favorites. When people come here, I'm like, eat at Clyde's. Like, it's it's American food, but it's local, it's farm to table, and it's just like a very well run local chain. And yeah. 1789 and the tombs are part of the same chain. Of yeah. Clyde's. Yeah. Yeah. And one of my all time American favorites is Martin's Tavern. Mm hmm. Yeah, the corner of Wisconsin and N. Yeah. Uh, That's like always a party busting out onto the sidewalk there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's just one of those places that you just, you, it, it just it's good for people watching. Mm hmm. It's really fun. Yep. So. Uh, and then one of our little other Italian treasures is Anglo, where we eat all the time. It's across the street from our office. Love going there. Their patio that they've opened up is really incredible, an outdoor eating space. Oh, where is it? It's awesome. It's right around the back. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's really awesome. And uh, also, I absolutely love, the the food is just so consistent. The uh, the staff is amazing. They're always so nice. And I love it when the window, when the weather's really nice, they pop out all the windows. Yeah. And so you, it's literally, inside the restaurant, it feels like you're sitting outside. It feels like you're in Italy, like to me. Like it's like yeah. being in a little trattoria in Italy. I think it's very, very cool. Yeah, it's really cool. So, and then for a little bit of history, and I know a lot of people now who are coming into the area have you know locations in a lot of in a lot of places like where they're living is Sweet Green. Yeah, Sweet Green originated in Georgetown. Sure did. Yeah, in the little tavern. Yeah, <laughs> the old little tavern at the corner of Bank Alley and M Street. Yeah. <sighs> So yeah, the little tavern was a chain of burger places in the 30s and 40s. I thought it was longer. Like I thought it was like more recent than that. Like to at least the 70s yeah. or 80s, but no, it closed up by like 1950 apparently. Yeah, and then also one of my favorite buildings in Georgetown and favorite restaurants um, is Call Your Mother. It is a pink building. It's amazing. Uh, you I know, love it. we drive down that street probably daily and yeah. the kids and I always have a joke that there's always somebody taking pictures in front of the building. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because I don't think it's like super remarkable. It's just that it's pink and it's got flat like flowers and stuff on it. But there's always people. I mean, there's people like on model shoots, like posing out there. Yeah. Yeah. So and their bagels are if you're if you're a New Yorker and you miss a good New York bagel, like call your mother is going to help you out. It's so good. It's one of my favorite bagel places in the city. It really is. Yeah. I mean, it's it's on par with bullfrog bagels. Um, You know, it's just incredible. Mm -hmm. I love it. So, yeah, definitely worth it. And uh, they opened the other location now in uh Foggy Bottom, south of DuPont area. Oh, they did? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, it's in uh, one of the hotels. Interesting. Yeah, I think it's off New Hampshire. Yeah. I mean, they're all over now. Like, they're up in Rockville. They're Pike and Rose, I think. Like, I've seen them everywhere. Yeah, and I'm glad to see them be so successful. And it's awesome. You know, the lines can be really long, but you can get in and out of there. And that's what I love about them. They're so efficient. Yeah. So, um, and then Stachowski's, which is one of my favorites. Uh, Clients of mine were so lucky to buy literally on the block. Uh, I'm so jealous. (laughs) (laughs) So I I went in there to snap some video for everybody and I'm a vegetarian. So the smell of all that meat was like, (laughs) I understand how people like this because it is like a very neat smell but yeah, yeah it, it's it's you can tell that's like a legit butcher yeah there. I love it it's so yeah. good I just you can't get enough of it so mm-hmm. and then uh, when we were with our other brokerage my favorite restaurant across the street Boulangerie Christophe uh, is amazing wonderful French bakery they're their breads are incredible. Um, I love their baguettes. It's so nice to go in there and they just have them stacked in the baskets and you can get it. Their cold brew is amazing. Um, it's just a really great place. Uh, and uh, their Paris breast dessert is one of the best in the city that I've tasted. So it's wow. really, really good. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And their sandwiches are awesome. Um, they have so much to offer. And especially like they have dinner options too. They'll have like pre-packed soup and things like that. So it's nice to be able to go in and just get something on the fly. That's mm-hmm. what I used to do all the time. Yeah. So 
Um, and then one of our more recent discoveries was Lottery, yeah. uh, the amazing macaroon place. It's so good. It's yeah. so beautiful. I, you just you walk in and it just feels kind of enchanted. It's it's just so cool. Yeah. It remind I mean it reminds me of the shops in Paris. Yeah, it that's really, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's incredible. I mean it's yeah. I've been in them before and it just when as soon as I walked in it took me back to Paris when yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. Know? Yeah, it was really cool. All right. What about cupcakes? Does Georgetown have cupcakes? <laughs> yes, it does. A very hotly contested cupcake scene. Okay. <laughs> People, you're going to hear it here. <laughs> Do not yeah. go to the place with the long line that happens to have a TV show. Yes, please stop thinking that Georgetown Cupcake is is the all be the end all be all. It is not. You need to go to Baked and Wired. It is absolutely incredible. I had a cake made there for friends' baby shower, mm -hmm. and it literally was so dense and so amazing, yeah. so rich that we were e eating the tiniest sliver of pieces. And I left. They didn't want to keep the cake because it was so much. We had like twenty five people there, and we still had more than half the cake left. Yeah. And everybody had had a piece of cake. I mean, it was just it was just so rich. People were splitting them. Yeah. Their cupcakes, as opposed to most cupcake places, which are all icing and very little cake. Yeah. Their cupcakes are the real deal. I mean, they're like the size of a muffin and then it's got just enough icing to to make it to make it work yeah but it's not overpowering of just icing yeah. their oreo cupcake is and carrot and the the carrot uh, the the carrot cake cupcake the german chocolate one i mean it's just it goes yeah. on and on they also make an oatmeal cream pie <laughs> like from your from your childhood yeah and it is it is it's like crack. I mean, it's it's that's insane. So fun. When we get them, we split them in fourths. Like that's yeah. how, and we'll each try. Like like Jim and I will each try, and the kids will each try one. You know, and it's like it's it's like enough, really. It's so good. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, I'm starting to see that there's like I have seen the like the last few times I've gone, the other cupcake place yeah. has not had a line out the door like it yeah. normally does, and Baked and Wired did have a line. They do. So it's like I feel good about that because I'm like. You should absolutely, like, they're a little bit off the beaten path. Like, you have to go down Thomas Jefferson to get to them, but yeah. they're absolutely worth it. Yeah, absolutely. I, it's incredible. And shout out to their, you know, sister restaurant, Big, uh, Big Joint. Absolutely love it. I mean, the chain is, or the, the restaurants are just amazing. I mean, they just, they, you know, the shop is just... I, the, some of the best desserts I've ever had and then also the savory food that they make is um, is amazing mm -hmm. so the yeah. fried green tomato sandwich is uh, to die for it's got pimento oh. cheese on it and it's on giant crusty french bread Jim would like that he yeah. likes fried green tomatoes it's amazing so yeah best cupcakes hands down yep. in the city you don't need to go to Georgetown Cupcake you need to go to Baked and Wired I mean unless you're hosting a little kid's birthday party then just get the shit out of Georgetown Cupcake yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because I got the Baked and Wired thinking I was being mom of the year and yeah. when I saw how much cupcake went into the garbage because kids don't finish it i was yeah. like you know what all of you are fired yeah like, you're not coming back to this kid's birthday party next year <laughs> oh God. yeah it's uh it's a debate that's been going on and on but yeah no it's just it's no not. the locals legit know that baked and wired is the place to go yeah 100 percent. yeah so yeah. and then thomas sweet neighborhood staple i know so remember that whole thing i just said about not going to the place with the longest line yeah ignore that for yeah. thomas sweet yeah, yeah yeah now i have to eat my words yeah because they have a long line all like once it's hot that's it everybody's lined i mean even the other day i drove by there and it wasn't very warm out and there was people lined up to get ice cream yeah the inside is always full it's very rare i mean i think i've yeah. driven by there like right before closing time and seen it not busy but it's always busy yeah yeah it yeah. just it's incredible and it, it's just it's one of those icons yeah yeah so, all right, for grocery stores, um, you have to get outside of Georgetown to what a lot of people likely, likely around here like to call Upper Georgetown, but I call it Glover Park yeah. because that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, Safeway. Those yeah. are all up Wisconsin Avenue, but you've got to get a little bit like out of Georgetown to get there. There's no like giant grocery store in yeah. I don't mean giant the chain. I mean, there is no giant the chain, but there's no big grocery store, you know, where you yeah. can get your big shopping cart and go up and down all the aisles. In yeah. Georgetown, you have to go to Glover Park or Upper Georgetown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and also the new Wegmans. 
that's the other yeah for yeah. that's further up yeah, wisconsin people, yeah further up wisconsin but a lot of people will go up there just because wegmans, yeah. wegmans is worth it. yeah and you will pass a giant going up there as well so it's kind of you've got almost pretty much everything all the way up yeah it's awesome giant cathedral commons yeah. yeah i mean if you if you want to ride if you if you don't want to take your car you can ride your bike up there right no just be prepared for the hill yeah, the hill yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was like yeah <laughs> i like walked down to georgetown and i walked up and i took too long of a route and i got home i'm like oh yeah. <laughs> that hill. Uh, yeah, so, and then that Rose Park, which is on the eastern edge of, uh, uh, they, they they call this, like, the East Village in Georgetown. Yeah. It's weird, but yeah, I've, like, I, you hear that, but Rose Park, which is, like, at 26th and uh, P area, they've got a farmer's market on Wednesdays from 3 to 7 in the warm months, so May to September-ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's talk about fun. Yeah, there's lots of fun. There's a lot of shopping here. Yeah. Um, there are, there have been many generations of the shopping scene in Georgetown. Natives sort of lament the old days of the 70s and 80s when you had those local mom and pop shops yeah. and those retail places like Britches, Sunny Surplus, Commander Salamander, um, Up Against the Wall, places yeah. like that Jesus, to yeah. name, I know, am I bringing back like yes. old? I was really digging to try to find like all the, because I can remember coming here when my brother was at Georgetown and seeing all these crazy store names, nothing you ever recognized. And um, yeah, I just don't, like I can't remember what a lot of them are now. A lot of yeah. them are just record shops and things like that as well. Do you want to know a fun fact? Fun oh, fact. Britches. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple in Old Town Warrington that bought the Britches. Name, oh. And they've reopened the store, and now there's another one that just opened. They had a second location. Did you and say so, Old Town Warrington? Yeah. As opposed to like a New Town Warrington? No, just Old Town. Oh, okay. Warrington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's called Old Town. Just the Old Town. It's it's the historic part of of Warrington. Okay. So yeah, and it uh, they have reopened Britches, and they've brought the label back. Yeah, and it's super cool. I really love it. They've got the rugby shirts and everything. It's oh, amazing. wow. Yeah, it's really cool. All right, well, there is a very robust retail uh, yeah. here, but the rents have kind of killed a lot of it, so you are seeing that there's businesses that have moved to other places. They've gone to 14th Street, where I imagine the rents are just the same, if not higher, yeah. but they've got probably a lot more foot traffic. Georgetown tends to see, I would say, probably as many as half of the patrons are tourists, maybe more, and so... Yeah. You may not always get a tourist who's shopping and buying a lot of stuff if they have to stuff it all in a suitcase and get back to wherever they're from. Yeah. So I think a lot of them just, if they're going to pay the high rent, they move to other parts of the city where the rent's not as high or they get more foot traffic. Um, so Waterfront Park has a splash pad that is open in the summer. There's an ice skating rink down at the waterfront, which is open in the winter. Capital Crescent Trail is a very long seven, eight mile trail that goes from Georgetown all the way up to Bethesda. You can run, walk, ride your bike, yeah. whatever you fancy. Uh, the, also, there's the Georgetown Boathouse, which is pretty cool. That's on the water below the Key yeah. Bridge. You can go there. You can rent kayaks, canoes, head out on the Potomac. Yeah. I mean, I would never do that because I'd be afraid I would catch something and end up in the falls somewhere <laughs> down the river. But, you know, because I know they're somewhere. But, yeah, I think you're going downstream anyway. You're not going to end up. The falls are further up. But. I love your irrational fear. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, like, get into a boat and I instantly see Niagara Falls. I'm yeah. like, here it goes. <laughs> Georgetown also has some notable landmarks to visit. The Exorcist Stairs. My there favorite. are always tourists there. Yeah. I've been there a zillion times yeah. and I went to go grab some video for this and some guy was like, and here we are at the Exorcist Stairs. And yeah. I was like, okay, you're from England or wherever. Yeah. That was not a good English accent. Yeah. But yeah, he was like doing narrating something or whatever. Um, there is Dumbarton Oaks yeah. Museum, which is just kind of like an old house. And then there's, um, they've got gardens. There's Tudor Place yeah. Historic Garden. Both are worth a visit. Both have been sites of field trips for my kids because we live up the street in the next neighborhood. So yeah. they take them there. Then there's Old Stone House. Right near our office. Yeah. Yep. Mm. It is the oldest, oldest unchanged building in D.C. from the mm. 1700s. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. I love it. And, the, yeah, it's fun to walk back and see, like, the garden and, yeah. and everything. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. You know. In April, there's a French market in Georgetown where more than 35 boutiques, antique stores, restaurants, salons, galleries display discounted stuff up to 75% off. Yep. December, there's Georgetown Glow, which is a festival of outdoor light installations. Yeah. From June to October, there is Dancing on the Waterfront, which is a free weekly dance class outdoors with the Potomac River as your backdrop. Yeah, it's so cool. 
And then every Sunday there's the Georgetown Flea Market, which is actually in the uh, parking lot of Hardy Elementary School, which yeah. again is really, they call it Upper Georgetown. You're kind of in Glover Park by this point, yeah. um, but on Wisconsin Avenue. And then, all right, so in Georgetown, you've got Pinstripes, which is, they've got really good food there. Like, we didn't it mention does. that in the food part because I was going to talk about it here. And yeah. then you can play bocce ball or go bowling. Also, another good place where there have been kid birthday parties and things like that. Yeah, we did bra we did uh, breakfast, um, or we did the brunch uh, buffet, and we played, and it was amazing. We had a really good time. There yeah. was, like, probably 15 of us. Yeah, and, and it's not like, lanes. this isn't bowling alley food where you're getting, like, uh, a pretzel and putting, like, French's yellow mustard on it. Like yeah. this, they've got really good food. Yeah, I think there were like five or six tables of food. I mean, it was incredible. Yeah, I got the bruschetta out. I was like, yum. Jeez, yeah. this is really good. Yeah. Uh, and then Volta Park and Pool is like a cute little neighborhood park in Georgetown. I really love it. The pool is yeah. always crowded though. I mean, it's they're like packed in there with people. Yeah. Uh, and then they've also got some courts there. So they've got basketball court, tennis court, uh, and then there's playground equi equipment there for all ages. Yeah. Um, they used to have it separated like zero to five and then five to 12, but now it, uh, somebody either took the signs down or they just figured yeah. out that the little kids can also go on the big kids stuff. I don't know. Yeah. And then we can't not mention Georgetown Veterinary Hospital, my beloved Dr. Morgan and his wife, Chris. Yes. I've been going there. I've, he's seen all of my pets, Sammy and Thora. Yep. May they rest in peace, the best little dogs. Yeah. And then Piper and Ziggy, who we just lost. Ziggy used to hear coughing in the background of our videos. He's yeah. It was an awful, awful, awful few days. Yeah. Um, and they've all been seen by Dr. Morgan, and they are amazing. I love them. Um, there's also a cat cafe, Crumbs and yes. Whisper, Whiskers. I, I've been dying to go in. We walked, Hannah and I walked by it the other day, and I was like, we have to go in there. So uh -huh. I walked by there, and a couple people opened the door, and all I could smell was, like, poop and kitty litter. <laughs> I'm good. But if you want to go in and check it out, let me know how it is. Take a video. Thank God videos don't have smell yeah. <laughs> smell a vision with them, because, yeah. And then this isn't quite fun but it's sort of like a neighborhood thing and I'm gonna stick this in there so we've been taking our car to the Georgetown Shell on Wisconsin yeah um, and so they need an honorable mention here because they are awesome so for many many years the service manager was a guy named Bobby he had a long ponytail great guy very honest yeah. the, the the guys working there the mechanics were all very honest um, and everything was very very fair Bobby got promoted because that's what happens when you're good at your job is the companies promote you to other places to go fix that up or whatever and they brought in a woman, which, you know, of course, Jim and I were like, wow, a lady sales manager. How cool. Yeah. So anyway, um, I was reading something online that across the street, the Exxon also has a service station. They are also excellent. So I had called her and I was trying to schedule one of our cars to go in. And then um, I said, I said something like, hey, are you guys related to the Exxon across the street? She's like, no, they're a totally different shop. She's like, actually, my husband's the service manager across the street. I was like, oh, so should I go to them? And she's like, uh, no, we're better. <laughs> I was like, damn, that was cold. Like, they're married yeah. to each other. They work across the street at dueling gas stations. That was pretty funny. Um, but, yeah, so they, I mean, they, they're just, like, most people in the neighborhood take their car there. It's like, it's yeah. not worth, you know driving super far away when those guys are all so honest and, yes. and, and lovely. So, yeah. And then Jim called and he was like, hey, um, I've got to bring in Melissa's car uh, for you guys to take a look at something. And she said, which tire is it now? Yeah. <laughs> Eek. You know me. <laughs> I used to say when I had an Audi that I'd walk into the service department and they were like, hey, Melissa. I'm like, yeah. I actually don't want you to know my name because it means I'm here too much. Yeah. And that's where I like, I hit a lot of stuff with my car. It's just <laughs> city driving. Um, all right. Then family and kids, I guess. Do you want me to take this one? Yeah. <laughs> Michael's like, I don't have kids. I don't yeah. care. So the Georgetown Library is kind of like our happy place. Um, it smells good in there. I love yeah. it. The librarians are really, really nice. They host yeah. some pretty cool events. It's pretty easy to park out front. Um, there's a co-op, cooperative play at Volta Park. So if you're lucky enough to get your little one into there, when they turn two, they can do the co-op play. Those work. There's multiple of them throughout D.C., but the way that they work is that you send your kid. It's usually like 9 to 12 or, a, you know, and they go for the five days a week, but one of the five days, the parent has to go in and also help. That's yeah. how they basically make this function and also make it affordable. Yeah. Um, so did you know there the public elementary school, Hyde Addison? I'm going to give you a little bit of um, a comparison here. 
up the street in Glover Park, our elementary school Stoddart has 83% in boundary students, meaning yeah. they live in the neighborhood and the boundary for the school. 20%, so one in five, are essentially English language learners at Stoddart. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty international school. I'm going to compare that with Hyde Addison. Guess how many are in boundary at Hyde Addison in Georgetown? Uh, one. I mean, like a one to five ratio. 20, yeah, you're pretty close. 30% is in boundary and 9% are English language learners. Okay, so that's a very curious statistic and a lot of people always wonder why is the elementary school in Georgetown not, does it not have everybody in boundary? So there's like a couple reasons. So the first reason is here it is. Georgetown is not primarily a place that a lot of families with little kids live. Do they live yeah. here? Absolutely. I know people who live here. Nash, our like favorite contractor in the world, lives there with his kids. Yeah. Um, but it trends, I mean, because of the price point, it does kind of trend older. You'll see people that are there for several generations or they've already raised their kids and they maybe bought their house in the 80s or 90s when house prices were more affordable. And now because they're in the well into the millions, you just don't see a lot of like families or, you know, yeah. One or two income, you know, families buying these houses. Yeah. Um, prices are high. The green space is somewhat limited aside from Volta Park. Um, but that's that. The second reason I would say is because the families in Georgetown, they go private. Yeah. So they just, that's just, they've got that money and they do. Hyde Addison feeds to Hardy Middle School, which will feed to the new high school, which is going to be in Palisades, which is MacArthur. Right now, yeah. anybody at Hyde Addison would go to Jackson Reed, which is in Upper Northwest, almost at the border. So it's a pretty long haul. Yeah. Now they're going to have a high school um, tentatively named MacArthur. They're going to rename it, but it's in, going to be in Palisades. So it'll be pretty easy for Georgetown yeah. families to get there. Much better. Yep. There are a few private schools in Georgetown. Um, we've got Georgetown Visitation. Holy Trinity, and then just off of Reservoir Road, you have Washington International School. Uh, and then there's also a charter school for those who are interested for the arts, which is Duke Ellington. And that yeah. is just like this gorgeous school that's amazing. up on a hill. And um, it's, it's you know, one of the one of the high points of, of D.C. for the schooling. People definitely yeah. love that school, but they did spend a whole lot more money to renovate it than they had planned. So that was yeah. kind of a little bit of a onion in the ointment. Yeah. So that's that. So yeah. that is Georgetown. Georgetown lifestyle. There's so much more here than you would expect, but yeah. it's just all kind of hidden. Um, so it's old neighborhood in D.C., the history and the charm, great places to eat. Yeah. Retail is not as robust as it's been, um, but I feel like the neighborhood will, you know, once again thrive yeah. because it's Georgetown and it yeah. has for almost 300 years kind of been this force to be reckoned with. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I've always loved it. Yep. So if you have any questions about Georgetown, our contact info is coming next.